The IEEE 802.3 AF standard back in 2003 provided up to 15.4 watts of DC power on each port. However, the IEEE 802.3 AT standard in 2009 upgraded the power to 25.5 watts of power for Type 2 devices, and this is referred to as PoE+. In the latest upgrade in 2018, the IEEE 802.3 BT introduced two additional power types, with 51 watts delivered power, Type 3, and up to 71.3 watts delivered power, Type 4. So what do all these power standards really mean? In simple terms, the more power that can be delivered over the PoE connection means more devices can be powered by PoE. And that's a great thing. For power over Ethernet to work, you need a few things. First, you need a device that takes a PoE connection, like a security camera or maybe a video doorbell. Next, you want to connect that device with the Ethernet cable, Cat5e or Cat6. Next, the other end of that Cat5e or Cat6 will connect to a PoE switch or a PoE injector. So first, let's talk about the PoE switch. A PoE switch has the power over Ethernet built into it, which means you can power devices using network cables. Pretty cool. Now, if you don't have a PoE switch and you're not planning on buying one, then you can buy a PoE injector. A typical PoE injector has three ports, a power input, a data input, and a power data output. So all you have to do is connect an Ethernet cable from a non-PoE switch to the injector. Plug in the power to the injector, and then connect the cable from the PoE device to the injector. And that's it. Can all devices use PoE? And the simple answer is no. First and foremost, that device needs to have a PoE connection. If it doesn't, then it will not work. And secondly, if you want to power a TV or a laptop, you'll need to purchase a high watt PoE device, and they are very expensive. So now let's talk about typical low watt PoE devices. These devices can be powered by a typical PoE switch or injector. VoIP and video phones, IP cameras, wireless access points, audio devices, video doorbells, and remote computer terminals. So what are the benefits of using PoE switches? Well, the obvious benefit is they cover both network and power needs. And secondly, you only need one cable for each device. And this helps when space is limited. And installing a PoE switch and maintaining it is very easy. It's pretty much a plug and play. No electrician is needed. Do PoE switches have limitations? Yes, PoE switches have limited power. So you typically can only power small devices. Like I said before, if you want to power a TV, you need a high watt switch. And they are very expensive. So in reality, it's not really worth it. So when should you use a PoE switch? If you only have one or two PoE devices, then my recommendation is to use a PoE injector. If you have more than two PoE devices, then I recommend using a PoE switch. And most PoE switches offer a mix of both powered and non-powered ports. And depending on your needs and devices, these PoE switches have 16 to 24 to 48 ports. And that gives lots of room for expansion. So now guys, you should have a firm understanding of PoE, how it works, all the devices, and the differences between a PoE switch and a PoE injector. And as always guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I answer all of my comments.